Good afternoon, everybody. Today I'm chatting with Dr. Stephen Terrio from Cytophage Technologies. Guys, it's a great time to have Dr. Stephen on because lately the whole talk about antibiotic resistance is becoming mainstream in the news. Not to mention there was recently an E. coli outbreak at McDonald's that created one fatality and multiple people in the hospital across 13 states. But onions and E. coli aren't the only thing to worry about in our food supply chain. Now, listen to this. The antibiotic market for poultry is expected to reach $5.4 billion by 2030. That's just for poultry. And Cytophage has just announced a product that is going to take care of bacteria for poultry that would otherwise be handled by antibiotics. So I wanted to learn more about this. So we reached out to Dr. Steven also to get his take on what's happening with the E. coli outbreaks. So oh, sit back, enjoy this interview. And if you're looking for interesting small cap biotech names out of Canada, this might be one you want to put on your watch list. All right, everybody, enjoy the interview. Dr. Steven, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for the invite. Always happy to be here. So we're speaking at an opportune time here, given that bacteria issues have been at the forefront of the news cycle over the last week. So let's start with the recent E. coli outbreak at McDonald's, where there were 75 cases across 13 states that saw 22 people hospitalized and unfortunately one person passing away, which is believed to all be related to some bad onions. And of course, this is just one of a number of recent outbreaks of E. coli that have happened. Why, in your view, are we seeing these outbreaks become so frequent? Oh, this is, again, this is a huge problem that we have right now in our in our food systems. Uh, antibiotic resistance is now going out of control. And because it's going out of control, we're getting pathogenic bacteria that are actually being transferred from not only our animals, but being put into our food systems. And because we don't clean our food the same way that we clean our animal meat, those pathogenic bacteria actually can you know, move around our regulatory processes and actually cause infections in our humans or in hum in our human population, which is a horrible thing to happen. Again, it's it's uh, when I read this, I was actually shocked because, you know, just talking about our company and bacteriophage, bacteriophage are a solution to actually dealing with this problem by simply spraying bacteriophage over top of the actual onions or the strawberries or the lettuce or whatever food product it is. And if you do that, you actually reduce the pathogenic bacteria in there over time. So when you transport and you do all of the things that we need to do to get to our food, to our population, we're not having bacteria grow and then causing disease in that population. We can keep that, that disease down or those bacteria at very, very, very low levels or even non-existent, and then they don't cause disease. So for me, this blows my mind because we have solutions for this right now that we can actually save people's lives. Again, a person died from eating a hamburger how does that work? It's it, it makes no sense. So again, you can see that I'm a little bit uh, irate about this, but I'm irate because there are solutions currently that we have in all of our toolkits to deal with this, but we're just not dealing with it. So you, you mentioned phages, obviously you're CEO of a company that uh, has a solution that can solve a lot of these problems, but let's, let's get into phages for a second. Uh, what sort of food issues are phages able to assist in dealing with? So anything that has a pathogenic bacteria is something that we can deal with. So E. coli and salmonella right now, we have products that we're using uh, internationally to deal with salmonella and E. coli products in, or problems in chickens. We can use those same phages in dealing with agriculture as well. And those are, again, just taking the phages and using it in a different process to actually deal with the disease that is, again, being caused by these animals, but being transferred to our food. We can actually stop that uh, that that path and actually use our phages to treat that. So let's take a, a step back here because there's going to be people that are watching this interview and they haven't seen our previous interviews. They're unfamiliar with cytophage. Maybe if you can give us that sort of um, bird's eye view of the company so that we just kind of understand what you guys do, what solution you guys have, uh, what sort of... Uh, assets you guys have in terms of how how you plan on uh, executing on your strategy, just so that our audience kind of understands uh, exactly what Cytophage is. No, oh, for sure. For sure. Again, it's I always like an opportunity to talk about what we're doing because it's so unique. And again, in my mind, this is going to be the science in the next five to 10 years that everybody's going to be talking about. So at Cytophage, what we are is we're a company that develops bacteriophage. 
Bacteriophages, very simply, are viruses that kill off bacteria. That's what they do. That's what nature's programmed them to do. What we do as a company is we make them very effective and efficient at their job, meaning we, you know, modify them or change them or work with them to make sure that they can actually deal with these organisms, like the onion problem that we had with McDonald's. Uh, where we could actually deal with that pathogenic bacteria before it gets to the population. For, for So for us as a company at a high level, we have three sectors. We work in human health, we work in animal health, and we work in food safety as well as manufacturing. And in those three areas, we have the ability, of course, again, to deal with any pathogenic bacteria that is causing an issue in those areas. So you guys recently announced a new product that's specifically for poultry in August. What can you yeah. tell us about this sort of product in terms of if I'm a consumer and I'm kind of wondering how how does this help me out? Uh, what can you tell us? Yeah, no, for sure. So so when we're looking at our products and we're looking at how we deliver our products, um, we look at a few different things. One, in Western societies, it's really easy to get products to farmers so they can use um, effectively in a cold chain, meaning four degrees, right? Really easy to do in Western societies. I'm sure many of uh, your, your viewers would have heard of cold chains because of COVID um, and the issues with COVID getting to certain places where there is no cold chains. For us, our new product was actually a lyophilized product. And lyophilization is where we can take our bacteriophage Again, those bacteriophages that we can use to treat these pathogenic bacteria, but we can take those, those bacteriophage and we can freeze dry them. When we freeze dry them, we can then package them in a certain way where farmers, and I'll use this as an example, just to sort of give you uh, my thinking of how this is of ease of use, as well as a great product line. So the ease of use is if you're a chicken farmer, you have broiler chickens, they last 30 or 35 days. Normally, when you're giving them treatments and antibiotics, you would be taking a liquid antibiotic and you would be treating those uh, chickens every day using that liquid antibiotic. Now, working in countries that are not necessarily Western uh, style types of laboratories, you have very limited access to cold chain, which means that you can't use liquids. So what I've done is I've created the package so you have 30 tablets. In those 30 tablets, those are lyophilized bacteriophage, which you can pop out, put into your water bottle, shake, throw into your water system, and then treat your chickens. What that stops is the cold chain for me. I can make this package, we can send it, it can sit on a farmer's shelf for six months, and there's no issues with it being degraded at all. And a good part about it, of course, is when we're dealing with bacteria, if we're using a bacteriophage, generally we can create a phage that will kill one type of bacteria, like E. coli, or we have another phage that kills another type of bacteria, like Salmonella. But there are many bacteria that cause infections in these chickens, and what we've done is we've actually allowed ourselves to treat that chicken over the month with whatever bacteriophage it requires to ensure that it has a very healthy life. So for me, this product is a game changer for how we're actually doing treatments in, uh, in the field right now. Now, how, how challenging would it be to commercialize a product like this? Like, do you guys have to go through uh, uh, a whole bunch of regulatory red tape? So, no. Uh, the good thing is, is all of the regulatory stuff that we've done with the liquid product is exactly the same as the lyophilized product. The only difference that we have, excuse me, is that the companies that are using it, they have a designation. It's either a liquid product or it's a pill product. So for us, we've registered as a liquid product. Now we just have to register as a pill product. And that's where we, of course, the companies that are working with us want to do a trial, show that the pill works. We can use that for regulatory approval and then move forward as, as uh, we've discussed earlier in the international markets. In June, you also announced an LOI with a Pan-Asian agri-food company based in Singapore. How have discussions progressed here? Oh, really well, actually. So, you know, one of the steps that we had to take and one of the things that we have to consider when we're looking at phages is when we create cocktails, they're generally regional. And what we wanted to do with this particular company was making sure that we actually combated the organisms that were causing problems in their area. Now, laboratory wise, again, uh, we're moving forward quite nicely. Everything's coming together uh, beautifully. And I think uh, we'll be you know, letting our investors and, and our, our stakeholders know about some great news that's coming up in the future around that, uh, that whole sort of development around the, the Pan-Asian um, product development. 
Okay, so Dr. Steven, if I'm following the story and I have you guys on my watch list or I'm an investor and I kind of want to know, okay, what, what should I be watching out for from the company over the relatively near term, we could say to the end of the year or even uh, maybe into Q1 a little bit, what should I be watching out for? Oh, some really good stuff's coming out. So our human health stuff is coming out. Um, again, we had a little bit of slowdowns. So just to give you a, a couple of pictures that are coming up that are, are uh, great news uh, worthy stories that are going to be again putting cytophage back on on the map for what we're actually doing so human health uh our six month review for our our first prosthetic joint patient is up basically we're getting the results now and uh, we'll be uh, giving everybody the news on how that's turned out um, as we're moving forward again we're still planning on developing a national clinical trial for prosthetic joints so we're still moving that process forward and we're doing it in a multi-hospital as well as a multi-patient uh, variation of the trial so as we're moving forward you're going to be hearing a lot of news about how we're working with other hospitals and hospitals to uh, again establish how we can generate a product for prosthetic joints through bacteriophage uh, therapy uh, another uh, great thing that we're moving forward with, again in animal health, uh, we've talked lots about doing things domestically, and we're starting to get a lot more traction domestically on an understanding of how bacteria just can be used um, in you know, agriculture, treating plants and stuff, as well as treating our eggs like we've talked about a lot earlier uh, and started pushing forward. So again, we're getting a lot more traction on that as people are getting more um, comfortable with using bacteria just to treat uh, their bacterial problems. Well, Dr. Stephen, thanks very much for hopping on here today. It's always a pleasure when we get to chat. And uh, I think you guys are going to be a story that's going to really pick up some traction in 2025 as we've seen stuff start to pick up in the junior markets here. There seems just to be just tremendous tailwinds at your guys' back. So this is a name that uh, I think is going to be something that a lot of our audience is going to want to have on their watch list. So thanks for hopping on here and let's continue to do this uh, uh, as you guys continue to roll out on your strategy. Perfect, Steve. Again, thank you for the invite. Always happy to be here. Guys, if you're looking for more commentary on Dr. Stephen Terrio's research as an expert in the field, check out the link in our YouTube description to see Dr. Stephen Terrio's recent TED Talk about antimicrobial resistance. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this interview, please smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Also, let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks, everyone.